Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, this is Scott. With uh, This is our going to be uh, our first job. Uh, First John chapter four, and this is gonna be week number four. As you can tell, I'm not in my normal environment. <laughs> I'm actually visiting uh, my kids, uh, my son and his wife, and two of my grandkids, and uh, I, mean, I got to enjoy the the Fourth of July uh, Independence Day, which we. Uh, I have to make a comment: is we have our country who's tearing itself apart and wanting to do everything, go woke. And, um, the hundreds of thousands of men and women who paid the price so we could be free so I could say what I want to and not be put in prison, those days will come to a close. Uh, in my opinion, my humble opinion, I think that it's sooner than later. Um, but until that day comes, I will not be silent, and neither should you. My suggestion is, you know, you don't go and... If you're, if you're a street preacher, God bless you. I can't do it. Uh, or I refuse to. <laughs> the when you're when you're preaching, I see people that are absolutely talented. Uh, the like uh, way of the master with Kurt Cameron and uh, Ray Comfort, absolutely fantastic. It's called Way of the Master. Uh, they have good tactics and they they able to give the gospel to anybody. And we have freedom to be able to do that. Whether I agree with you or not, my. I raised my right hand many, many years ago to, to, to protect and defend the Constitution against enemies, not a politician. So, unfortunately, our politicians, we have a lot that are now hate our country. So, what's going on in Israel, I suggest you keep up with it. I do suggest you go to Amir Surfati. It's Amir, A-M-I-R, Surfati. It's T-S-A-R-F-A-T-I, Surfati, Amir Surfati. It's uh, here and now. Uh, behold, it, or called, excuse me, behold Israel. Uh, and he, I get updates like that the news. I don't even hear on the news. I stopped watching the national news. To be honest with you, I don't watch Fox. I don't watch obviously. I don't watch CNN and N NBC, the Communist News Network. I don't watch those like that. What I'm doing is I'm getting better information straight from people who are actually on the ground with their cell phones. So, you know, that way you can see prophecy being fulfilled as, we're, as we speak. Okay. Uh, next week, just real quick. Um, next week, I'm not sure whether I'm going to do any uh, lessons next week. I will, I will be uh, flying out of, out of the state and uh, I'll be with some friends. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to... Uh, I don't know how good the, the, the I'm going to be out in the middle of nowhere, and I don't know how good a, a, a signal I'm going to have, so I'm going to go ahead and call it and say, more than likely, I will not teach next week. Uh, matter of fact, let's just go ahead and call it, okay? Um, so all next week, I will not be online if, unless just for some, some reason I'm able to, okay? So don't expect me on next week. If I come on, it's just for whatever reason. Uh, the thing is this week, uh, what I want to do is I want to get into John, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Uh, tomorrow I will be doing uh, Shorts of Scott number 34. Uh, thank you for the comments. Uh, the, uh, I didn't realize different, some of the people that were listening. Thank you for, for your, your kind comments. Um, and those, that, even the ones that have had contact me that disagree with the belief system, thank you for being at least, you know, we disagree, but we can still go out and have a glass of tea together, okay? And chips. <laughs> tea and chips, that's what, what we called it. So, let's go ahead and pray in. Let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Uh, hey, James. Father, thank you for this time together. Your blessings, your mercy, and your grace. We ask that your Holy Spirit give me the words to say and for the words to hear. And touch everyone that's listening with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's in the name of Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay. If, the, if something's happening, like the audio starts going wonkers, uh, let me know in, in the comments because I can see them. Okay. The thing is, again, I'm, I'm, I've seen this again, and I'm going to make another comment. I, you know, I'm not shy. Is two things. One is on prayer. I, I keep hearing pastors praying. They say, God, and they give their prayer, and they say, Amen. 
or they say in your name. Whose name? Okay, when they say when they're praying, they, if they're praying to the Father and they say in your name, you don't pray to the in the name of the Father, according to what Jesus told us. And I talked about last week the, the, the different places you go to in Matthew and in, in Luke and in Romans where you know Christ says, you, know, you pray to the Father, our Father who art in heaven. And then he goes right down in the same, same passage. He says, and anything you, you pray in my name, in the name of Jesus. And then you go into Romans chapter 8 where he talks about when you pray in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you pray to the Father in the name of the Son with the indwelling, understanding the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He's the one giving you the words to say. So if you're praying, oh God, you know, hear my prayer, amen, or in his name. Okay, they say, well, I, I know, he knows who I'm praying to. Yes, but if you're praying by yourself, yeah, okay, in your mind, you may be thinking in the name of Christ. I'm thinking in my head or in my heart, yeah. If you're praying in front of a church or in front of a congregation, who do you, you don't know where people are in their in their walks, so be sure to help lead by example, just the same way we were shown by example. Okay? Number two, uh, I will not be, like I said, I won't be in the in the state for through next week. So I will not be able to come and teach uh, in person for at least uh, well a week from Monday. I will not be all right, let's make it a week from Tuesday. A week from Tuesday, I will not be available to teach in person. Uh, but if you're wanting me to come to your church or whatever after that, uh, please get with me. Uh, just email me at pray5, that's the number 5, pray5.org at gmail.com. That's pray5.org at gmail.com. The website, the pray5.org, that's uh, the one, our main uh, ministry website, is undergoing work right now. Uh, and eventually, you'll see it. I'll advertise it once we're finished, and we'll be going to Twitter. Uh, TikTok, not TikTok, excuse me, scratch that, I hate Twitter, uh, Telegram will go ahead and be up, and we'll still be on YouTube, to what extent, I'm not sure yet, I'll let them tell me, and Facebook like we're here, okay, if you leave, if you see us leave here, then go ahead, and you can find, you'll find us on Twitter, and you'll find us on Telegram, and I will continue doing this, uh, making these, if you'd like to see the past episodes, or the past podcast, just go to pray5.org, and just type it in, uh, whichever study that you want to, that you're interested in, and it'll pop up with the videos. Okay, okay, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Again, if the if, if it's too noisy or whatever, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm outside. I've got grandkids inside that are loud, so besides it, it's beautiful right now. So that's why I'm doing this, as you can see. Okay, let's go ahead and go into uh, chapter four. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Now, look, at, this is a lowercase. Every spirit, what he's referring to is not every spirit. In other words, whether it be a human or a demon, not, not the Holy Spirit, okay, because it's lowercase. He said, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. When he says spirits, he's referring to the spirit of Antichrist or actually maybe even a demon who's speaking through or using a human to get their point across, okay? So, it says, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world, and by this you'll know the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God. In other words, he's very clear here. He's saying there's a way to test whether somebody's telling the truth or not. If they're saying, well, you know what, I believe in this, believe that, and they're a false prophet or a false teacher, he says, well, how do you, can you tell the difference? Somebody's talking to me and said, well, God told me to give you a message. If God told you to give a message, then the Holy Spirit who indwells me can do the same thing to me, to give me the message, okay? So I'd be very suspect of that, okay? So the way that he's showing how to test is, is very easy. Um, let me see if I want to go ahead and go into that one. Okay, let's go ahead and go into this, and I'll come back on the commentary. It says, by this you know the Spirit of God. And he says, here's how you know. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And it's not just say, okay, I believe Jesus came to the earth. No, Jesus. Okay, remember, you have to have the whole canon of Scripture. You can't just use one verse or two verses and say, okay, now we've got the opinion. We're going to start handling the snakes or something. The the things, I, I just offended somebody. I'm sorry. Uh, the thing is, he's saying, if you believe, Christ says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's not just believe who that he, what he did, believe, believe who he is, but what he did. He came to earth and 
die for the sins. It's a, it's more than just that sentence. Believe everything that he said. Not, not just pieces of it. Believe all that Jesus said. And he's saying here, he said, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Because remember what Christ said. He says, he came in the image of sinful flesh. In other words, he came in human form. He's, he's the only one of the, tri of the triune God that has flesh. The other two are spirit, obviously. The Father and the Holy Spirit are spirit. Okay? So, he's saying tested. And he said, because if you're going to test them, you're using the word of God. The same thing that Michael the archangel did when Satan approached him in Revelation. He said, when, when Satan came up to Michael and says, give me the body of Moses. Remember that? And what did Michael do? He didn't fight him physically. He said, the Lord rebuke you. In other words, he used the word of God, which is, is all powerful. The word of the spoken word of God is, is, is out from him. Satan had to leave. Okay? This is, and Michael, the most powerful angel of God that was created, used, drew from that strength. Okay? He's telling us to do the same thing. To use the same common sense. If the angels are doing it, why? We don't worship angels. Angels are created just like we are. They're a little above us now. When we, when we go to heaven, they'll be a little below us, according to what his scripture says. That's, that's another study. He says, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Okay, real quickly. It's more than just, okay, yeah, G I believe in Jesus. Well, there's, the demons believe in Jesus. That doesn't save them. There's lots of people that are in hell that believe in Jesus, but they never accepted him and accepted his free gift and took it all, his, his gift, who he is, he's God Almighty, came in the image of sinful flesh, lived a sinless life, went to a cross he didn't deserve to die for sins he never committed. And he says, and he died and went to a grave and rose three days later and proved who he was. That's who we worship. And he's reiterating this fact. Okay, let's, let's keep that in mind. Okay. Well, hey guys. If I don't if I don't see your question, just uh, when it pops up, I'll get as soon as I notice it, I'll I'll address it. Or I'll address it tomorrow in uh, Shorts for Scott. Either way. Okay. It says every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ of that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is not of God, and this is the spirit, lowercase, the spirit of anti of the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist. We have a an Antichrist in that uh, Daniel talks about. We have uh, the John the Revelator, the same one who's writing this, speaking about a specific individual, and this is going to be a man who's actually in, uh, evil in embodied in a physical form that's indwelt by a demon, and then later on in Revelation, it's going to actually be physically indwelt by Satan himself, okay? But the, the spirit of Antichrist has been around since Genesis, the spirit of anti-God, okay? So he's saying the spirit, they understand. So when we go to churches that they are teaching something other than the gospel, that's the spirit of Antichrist, or someone who hates us, or worships, you know, Anything that's unrighteousness is the spirit of Antichrist. Okay, we got that? Okay. It says, and this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard of, was coming and is now already in the world. This was written 2000, or 1900 years ago. He said it's already in the world. This is, Christ was telling us this, was telling the apostles this, and the Holy Spirit had them brought it back to their memory. Remember John chapter uh, 14, verse 26, where he says, I will, don't worry about what you're going to say because I will bring it back to your mem your conscious memory. Okay? So, he's saying that he's already in the world. He's already working. Okay? Remember, this is also after the cross when Satan realized he was done. He, he, his head was crushed and bruised the heel of the Messiah, which was a prophecy from Genesis 3.15. Okay? Verse 4. You are God, uppercase. You are God. Little children, you have overcome them because he, Christ, who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Okay, we've, we've heard this for many, many years. If you've been in scripture, you know, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. That's literally saying that the Holy Spirit who indwells you, God, is sinless and he's greater than anything else in the world. Now, on the... Let me go ahead and, and read this on the spirit of Antichrist on the commentary. Uh, 
this is going to help kind of solidify a little bit more, maybe. The spirit of Antichrist. These false teachers who denied the true nature of the Son, that's Jesus Christ, are, are to be identified among the Antichrists. These are any preacher, quote, preacher, I use that term loosely, someone who stands up in the pulpit and claims to be Christian and is teaching in a pulpit and says, well, Christ, you know, Jesus is, is wasn't, isn't God, but, we'll, but we're going to, and then you listen to them. As soon as they say that, you need to get up and walk out or challenge them. Say, really, who is he then? Because he, he claimed to be God. And here's the passages to, to back it up. Well, that's, you know, they'll, they'll give some kind of excuse, okay? Another thing is the, um, another thing is, let me go back out, regress, please forgive me, um, is when they on the, said, if you confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, and someone says, well, yeah, kind of, but, and they give any other answer other than, yes, I believe Jesus Christ came in the flesh to the earth, okay? Meaning, we know who he is. He's God Almighty. He came in the flesh. And they're, but they try to hem haul around it and do any other kind of you know loopholes or say, well, you know what, our belief, you know, no. It's like when somebody asks, you know, what is a woman or what is a man? They go, well, you know, the loving person, and they go all the way around the question and never answer because they know that they know the answer doesn't agree. They don't agree with the answer. Okay, same thing. It's, it's nothing new. This has been around since Genesis. Okay. So he who is in, is, is in you is greater than he who is in the world. God's in you. The world, the world system is run by Satan, okay? Many people are under his, under his authority and going to pay the price, okay? Verse 5, it says, they are of the world. They, who's they? Anyone who follow, is not following Christ, who is, you know, following the sin of this world and doing whatever they want to, any unrighteousness and, and justifying it, whether it be sexual sin or theft or murder or whatever you want to say, they're they're against God. They don't want anybody telling them what to do. That is the spirit, one of the spirit of Antichrist. They is the world, the world system, the people of the world. Okay, that are, are that aren't following Christ. They are of the world. They are the world system. Okay, these are the lost people. Therefore, they speak as the world. Duh, because they're from the world. They therefore speak it like the world, okay? They are of the world, and the world hears them, okay? Their own, they're speaking unrighteousness, like you see the people who are marching for different things that are against Scripture, you know, sexual perversion or communism or socialism, which is anti-Bible. They're speaking the words of their father, okay? Whether they acknowledge he exists or not, it doesn't matter. If you don't, if you don't fear him, you don't you know, then you're not afraid of it. Sorry for the noise. I'm, there's a lake right there. <laughs> or there's a stream. I'll just bet that, okay? So if you hear motors going by and everything, can't, I can't do anything about it. They're too far away. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as the world, and the world hears them. In other words, it makes their own kind accept them, which is of Satan. Verse 6. We're of God. Now you look at this word and say, which, when you say of God, are you talking about of Jesus or of, of God the Father? The term here, the Greek term, which you can look it up in blueletterbible.org, is Theos. Theos, which means God the Father. Okay? Christ is also called Theos from time to time, but it's, they're interconnected. Okay? But this word is the Father. The Father hears us. So we're of the Father. We are children of God the Father. Okay? We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit, lowercase, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. What's he talking about? It's not, it says whoever knows the spirit of truth, and it's not uppercase, so it's not the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth is what's in your head, what's in your soul. The word that's in your heart that you, you either believe what this says or you don't. And it's called, if you don't, then it's error. Or if you take it and you scramble it around like uh, a lot of religions do, they'll take it and they'll only take pieces of it. That's error. And that's a different gospel. Okay, and there's a discipline for that. It's it's uh, cost you your soul, okay, to come in and change the gospel, okay? Galatians chapter 1, if you want to read that yourself. Galatians chapter 1. Okay. 
This is referring to, okay, whoever's teaching you and you, you love the world and you're listening to them, they're going to love you. <laughs> Just look on the news. If you if you march to certain rallies, boy, they're right behind you. They're like, come on, we're right behind you and we're, we, we love you. You preach or you follow righteousness, the people of righteousness, they're saying, hey, good job for standing up. Each side will disagree. One side, the left, will, you know, because on the left side of Christ is the goats and the, and the tares and the weeds. On the right, side of the thro- uh, right hand of the throne of Jesus, according to his own words, are the sheep and the wheat the saved. On, the le- on his left side are the lost. It's kind of kind of funny that's in our political system. It's, it's turned out kind of wonky like that. Um, so therefore, there, you're going to be loved either by the righteous people who are fewer or the unrighteous who are more. Okay? Again, you can either offend people or offend God. Your choice. Which one's going to make a decision on where you live and what happens to you for eternity? The opinion of people is going to matter not a hundred years from now. Okay? So it says, he who, who knows God hears us. In other words, the teachers. He who is not of God does not hear us. And this is John, the, rev, the revelator, the apostle speaking on this. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. In other words, we've read it, we understand what the word says, and we know what's right and what's wrong. Okay, they don't have a monopoly on this. Okay, let me go ahead and read another commentary on this. I have to agree with this. And what I do is I read the commentaries. You can, in, in your book, you can see where all the notes and the underlines and because you're constantly going back and forth through this through the years, okay, until you wear it out. And this will help you study, get more information quicker, build to learn more, okay? Just a system that's real easy. Okay, by this we know that the spirit of truth and the spirit of error, okay, he's going to explain what he's talking about here. He says, the Old Testament and the New Testament are the sole standards by which all teaching is to be tested. In contrast, Demonically inspired teachers either reject the teaching of God's word or to the elements to it. Hmm. Hmm. False teachers who denied the true nature of the Son are to be identified among the Antichrist. Remember how we just talked about that? Okay. Verse 7. Beloved, let us let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God. Uh, don't go. Don't jump ahead of me. Let me finish, and I'll come back to love is love. And knows God. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. Verse 9, In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world that he, we might live through him, through Jesus Christ. You know, God, you know, the, the, uh, John 3.16, and if you'll go through a lot of the chapter, or a lot of books in the Bible, and you go to th- uh, verse three, verse sixteen, a lot of them have uh, similar information. It's kind of cool how they all interlock together. He said, he, "I sent my only begotten Son into the world, my firstborn, which is a title. The Son of God is a title. It's not saying, well, he was the firstborn. He's of God. He came out of God. He is God. Okay." And this is just giving the title of it. He's in subjection to the Father, but he's always existed with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Okay, verse 10. In this love, in this is love, and that we loved God, but that he, not that, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. In other words, the, the price for sins, the payment for sins. Okay? Beloved, beloved if God so loved us, we, ought, we also ought to love one another. Self-explanatory. I don't have to go back with this, but I hear them say, well, love is love. Okay. Let me address that. Love is love. Okay. Something, some, some bumper sticker made up. Um, said, love is love, so therefore it must be truth. If somebody says, well, okay, just makes up something, and all of a sudden you have to respect it. No, no, you don't. Love of God, yes, he's a God of love, but he's also a God of justice. And let me make very clear on this. Because God loves, love never, ever changes God's 
word. What do you mean by that? Well, there's people right now saying, I can go out and do whatever I want to, live however I want to, and God is going to accept it. That's not what he says. He said, if you practice these sins, he said, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, do not be, do not be fooled. Do not, do not be deceived. Who's the deceiver? Satan. He is the deceiver. That's his name. Satan means deceiver. So do not be deceived. For you do for do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Romans chapter one. So, love is love? No. Love doesn't mean that you get by. Like if you love if I love going out and robbing banks, I love going out and stealing from my neighbor. Okay, you see the problem. Because they only pick one thing. They say, well, love is love because if two people love each other, then that's okay and God, God's fine with that. Not according to what he says because he says, then how do you explain I have rules? If you love me, if you, if you love me, then you'll, do, you'll follow my commandments. Jesus said this many times. He said, and we talked about it last week. If you love me, you'll follow my commandments. And one of the commandments, several of the commandments is to follow what is and is not sin. He lines out in Romans chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and those are just two places. Jude and all the different places and all the different places in Scripture. Jesus said, if you'll follow these commandments, if you'll follow these commandments, you'll show that you love God by doing what I tell you to do. Read it and do what it says. Not rocket science. So when somebody does something else and they say, well, this. We're following all the other rules, but we're going to do whatever my whatever my flavor of sin is, is to not acknowledge that that's sin, and you're not forget. How can you be forgiven of something you don't even see a sin? Because you choose. We all have a tendency for a sin, or or more than one. If we choose what we deem as sin and what is not, that means we're telling God, this is okay, and you can't judge me for it. And on the judgment day, you will not be at the Bema seat or the judgment seat of Christ. You will be at the white throne judgment out of Revelation. You'll be on the left side of his throne. Okay? You say, well, that's your opinion. Read the Bible. You say, well, that's your interpretation. Read the Bible. It's, it's very clear. He's, you know, go to Romans. He said, do not be deceived. He names all the sins. He said, do not be deceived. He said, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, I believe in Jesus. Well, but you're you're doing you're doing stuff that you're not supposed to. Okay, and he says if you do these things and you're practicing sin and you you're not saved. His words, not mine. Don't take my opinion for it. Read it. Romans chapter one, First Corinthians chapter six. Well, there's more places than that, but that that'll get you started. And if you say no, I don't believe that. Well, then that's a personal choice. Okay, but don't don't expect to get into his kingdom. I don't have time to be to be warm and fuzzy. I have to answer for what I say. I refuse. I refuse to, to be deceptive. I refuse to be down the bush. I don't want any money from you. I don't want anything from you. If you see something here that I've said that's wrong, then bring it out. Because it, I got brought. I got pointed out on something uh, last month on, on something I did, on something I interpreted incorrectly, and somebody brought it to my attention, and I had to apologize for that because I didn't see it. I, I, I mean, Okay. okay, let me get back into here. Okay, verse 12. This is on the on your on your ah on this uh, it's called seeing through God, seeing God through love. This is on the study Bible. I highly suggest buy a study Bible. My one I my prefer one I my preference is the New King James Version from the John MacArthur Study Bible. You can probably if you get them on sale, they usually run about forty, forty five dollars a piece. Well worth it. Okay. Buy one from one of your neighbors, okay? Verse 12, no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. That's a prepositional phrase. It means he's not outside of us. Like some of my friends think that he's not actually indwelling us. He says he abides inside of us. Very clear. There's, the, the, there's no other way to translate that unless you screw it up. He abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. Now, when we saw here, it says, no one has seen a God at any time. Why is that there? If you remember back in uh, Romans, not Romans, uh, 
John, John 1.18. John 1.18. Let me go over there real quick. I'm not, oh. oh, that's cool. I marked it. <laughs> I like it when I do that. John, John 1.18 is, the, is the, the big one here that I look at. It says, it says, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son. Well, wait a minute. Time out. Time out. Is this a contradiction? This is one of the contradictions. They say, hey, wait a minute. You said you can't see God, but yet Jesus, you say, is God. Uh-huh. Keep reading. This is in John chapter 1, verse 18. It says, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son. God is the only begotten Son. His words. The only begotten Son, comma, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. He, Jesus Christ, has declared the Father. They said, no one has seen God. No one has seen God the Father. They said, but no one has seen God the Son. You can't see the, we can't, we, no one can see the face of God and live. Moses found that out. God said, you can't see my face and live. It'll kill you. But just on the chapter before that, he ate with him along with Aaron, his two sons, and 70 of the elders. So 74 people. It's in Genesis. Read it. Or I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 30, somewhere in between 30 and 34. I, I just went blank. But anyway, um, and then he, he ate with them. Okay, uh, now that's going to drive me crazy. The um, He ate with them, but he, was, he can't see God the Father. God the Son is the mediator. Okay? He said, so what do you mean by the mediator? So there's only there's only one mediator between God and man, and it's the man Jesus Christ. Verse thirty three or chapter thirty three of Exodus. I found it. Luckily, I had it marked. See, this is why I do this. I was thumbing through until I saw the until I saw the markings. It makes it easier for you. Ver, uh, this is verse uh, chapter thirty three, Exodus thirty three, verse eleven. So to to the Lord mo, spoke to Moses. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his own friend. Okay, this is just one place. You also have Gideon. We also have Jacob, who is Israel, who wrestles with God. And we have several others. Okay, then you go over to verse, the same chapter, in verse 33, uh, verse 20. It says, but he, but he said, God said, you cannot see my face. This is God the Father speaking. This is still. Yeah, or Yahweh in the in the Hebrew. Yahweh in the Hebrew. Because you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, Here is the place, here is a place by me where for you shall stand in the rock. Someone says the cleft of the rock, in other words, a, a little cliff where you can hide inside there. So it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put my I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand until I pass by. In other words, so you don't peek, because it'll kill you. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but not my face. You shall not see. Then we go to uh, Exodus 24, 9. Exodus 24, 9. Why was I going to this? 20, uh, Exodus 24, 9. I guess somebody was needing it. Okay, it says, verse 9. It says, then Moses went up, also Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. These are the, these are the two sons of Aaron and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. Didn't he just say no one can see the face of God? It says, and there was there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire, sas, sapphire stone. It was like a like the very heavens, and it was in its clarity. But on the nobles of the children of Israel, he said, do not lay your hand, do not lay his hand. So they saw God, and they ate, and they drank. That's uh, Exodus 24, 9 through 11. Also Exodus 33, 11. Exodus uh, 33, 20 through 23. To be honest, I was not planning on going there. That's a study that's going to stir up enough interest. So when you, when you want to talk to me, right now I've got time. So if you're wanting to con contact me, text me or uh Buzz me on Facebook Messenger. Uh, call me or, or buzz me. Say, hey, I need to ask you a question. I'll make time. Okay. 
Verse 13. By this we know that we that we abide in him. Another preposition of faith, because he is in we are in him and he is in us. Christ is the one who said this. Okay? We are in him. This is God. And he it, we know that that we abide in him, again, another prepositional phrase, and he in us, because he, as God, has given us his Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 9 through 11. There's another place you can look up to, to, uh, to show the validity of this. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son, that's Christ, as Savior of the world. Remember in Isaiah chapter 44 and 45, he says, And God, the Savior of Israel, the Savior. Yeah. Even Mary uh, in the New Testament calls Christ my God and my Savior. You know, no one needs a, if you're sinless, you don't need a Savior. Okay, that's it. You can go to, you can type in, go to the pray5.org website and type in Mary and look in your scriptures and you can read it for yourself. Verse 15, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. In other words, you're saved. So I don't have to believe that Christ came and died on the cross for my sins. No, 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 no. Don't, don't even go there. This, look at the context. <laughs> okay, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, well, how do you, the Son of God, this is a title, that he's God the Son. This is a title of who he is. God abides in him and he in God. In other words, he believes what he said and Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's not a contradiction. This is just emphasizing and it's saying the same thing. Okay? Use the whole canon of Scripture, not one verse. Verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has, has for us. God is love. And he who abides, he, it's us, man and, male and female, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. In other words, abides in love. He's not referring, if you love somebody, you're going to tell them the truth. And I use this analogy quite a bit. If I had, my house was on fire and you, and you were kicking on my front door because I wake at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I come to my front door and you say, dude, your house is on fire. Flee, get out. Take, get your kids and your, your wife and kids and your pets. Let's go. Your house is, in, is engulfed. Okay, that's someone who loves me and is not worried about offending me, and they're not being rude. They're telling me the truth. Truth will offend the wicked because they don't want to hear it. They want to continue to sin without somebody telling them they're wrong. Their choice. Do not argue with them. You can tell them the truth. They choose whether they want to accept it or not. I can stand at my front door with my house burning around my, down around my shoulders and choose to go back in the house. Most of the most of the population is doing that, according to what they say. The, the, the road to destruction is broad, and many or most take it. The path to God is narrow. Many are called, but few are chosen. Very small remnant. Okay. I don't have to agree with it. I don't like it. I'll tell you right now. I I, I don't like that at all. I, I I would do something different, but I'm not God. He made that choice. He made that. He made that. He says, "I made a way for you." So therefore. You know, you can accept or reject. Come out of the house or step back into it. This is with the sin that people are going in and are, whether it be lying. I mean, I've got people who, I know more people who are doing that lie and don't see a problem with it, with a white lie or, or and say, oh, it's okay. I see more people that I know personally that are doing that than I do that are in sexual sin. And they think there's a difference. Okay. All liars will have their, lake in the, their place in the lake of fire. For God. Verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he, Christ, is, so are we in the world. Okay, what is he talking about? Okay. <laughs> okay. He's perfected among us this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. When we stand up, this is the believer going to the, uh, the, the Bema seat and referring and going to the bema seat, saying we're going to be bold because we know we did, you know, we screwed up, but we we're forgiven. We know we walk up there. We know we're going home. And those who have served Christ more will find out there also. So we have boldness, saying not arrogance, not pride, but no, I did the best I could, or I, I, I did what I could. I followed when I came to my senses. I followed Christ. Okay, 
boldness. In other words, you're not going to be going up and going, oh, crud, it's going, the door going to fall out from underneath me and put me in hell. That's not there. At the white, at the white throne judgment, however, there will be fear and anxiety and uh, you're going to have, you know, an anxiety attacks, I guess you'd say, but you're going to have fear because you know now you believe God because you see, you get to see the judge who is Jesus Christ. Okay? There, there's no fear in love. Perfect love cast out fear because fear involves torment. In other words, if you're afraid of your salvation, that you don't have salvation, if you're like, well, I don't believe in Jesus or I do kind of, but and you can't sleep or you have fear, not knowing where you, when you die, you think, well, I believe in evolution or whatever, but you're not sure because well, that's a, the silliest, silliest thing I've ever thought of. It's the most unsci unscientific theory that I think has been created is, is done by our enemy. He says, you're not worried. You're, you're worried because you don't know when you close your eyes where you're going. Um, I was listening to, uh, there was a man who, a professor who, taught um, who, who taught a, uh, a underling I guess you call him or a protege and he was telling him about atheism this young man left Christianity completely left it that means he never he was never of them in the first place and on his this young man caught cancer years later and he was on his deathbed and this professor came up to him and says hang on to your atheism hang on to your atheism he said Go, you know, go out as a, you know, as a true believer in atheism. He said, "You've left me nothing to hang on to because it's 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 empty." The young man died without Christ, and now we know where he's at. Okay, same thing. But if you have Christ, no matter what your no matter what your circumstances are, like people who are being martyred, like what's getting ready to happen in our country, uh, like the next lockdown is going to be coming up. I think they predicted that the next uh, pandemic is coming in the middle of 2024. It's awful. It's awful suspicious that they, you know, that they've said, "Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna have another pandemic come up," and they're given a time frame of when it's gonna show up. But it's supposed to be uh, natural. <laughs> come on, they, they, they were talking about this a year or so ago. So when it does happen, you and I will both see the date, and the time. It could be sooner, it could be later. We don't know. But they're saying that the World Economic Forum. I uh, was listening to, and I don't know if it's still up on their site. But it may be, I haven't looked in the past month, that they're predicting that we'll have another pandemic in the middle of 2024. And they, they don't worry, they already have the two shots that are coming in from China. So, don't you find that a little suspicious? That's the world. It'll make you have fear. You fear everything. As a believer, if they, if they kill this body, we'll stand in the presence of Christ. Do not deny Christ, even to, to, to death. Because as soon as you close your eyes, you're opening up and looking at him square in the face. I don't have fear. I mean, I don't like the idea of what one of these days is going to happen. But the thing is, he said, know that when you close your eyes, you know where you're going. You know where your future's at. Okay. Fear has made perfect. Fear has not... Uh, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. In other words, who fears, in other words, the unsaved has the fear because they don't know where they're going. They don't have the love of Christ in them. A prayer, the only prayer that um, that is, is heard by, by God from an unbeliever is the prayer of uh, repentance, asking for salvation. All of the prayers just don't go anywhere. The prayers of a believer, all prayers of a believer, God can hear because he, we belong to him. Okay, he, we're his, he, called us, he calls us his children, the children of God. Not God doesn't love every child, every person on this planet. People say, oh, God loves everybody. Your term is, does he wish for everybody to come to a saving knowledge of Christ, of him, so he can go to heaven? Yeah, 2 Peter 3, 9 says that he would wish that everybody would come to a knowledge, but that's not the case. Not everybody belongs to God. People who die, not everybody who dies goes to heaven. They're not in a better place now. Most people are not in a better place. They're in a worse place. As we say here in Texas, he stepped out of the frying pan into the fire, literally. Okay. If you don't want that, there's a way out of that. There's a way of forgiveness. It's easy. He did all the work for you. Verse 19, we love him, Christ, because he first loved us. 
Obedience through, but, uh, uh, obedience through faith is on this next one. Verse 20, it says, If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he sees, how can he love God who he has not seen? In other words, your brother is who? Another human being. What is what's he talking about? Love your enemies? Remember that? Love your brother? Yeah. means you're looking, we're the two commandments that Christ gave with the, the Pharisees who did not love their brother. What you, he, they said, what's the best commandments in, what are, the, what are the commandments we need to follow? And Christ said what? To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second one was to love your neighbor as yourself. Everything in the Bible revol revolves around these two commandments according to God. Loving your brother means you may not like you may not like your neighbor, you know you don't you don't get get along well with them, but you can thank sure pray for them, or if they need something you can do something. You don't have to go over and, and be all wishy washy, but you can go you can extend the hand of friendship, and if they bite it off, okay, but you don't you don't retaliate, and you still pray for them. You still look for an opportunity to to serve them because what if you for you spend the time over years of trying to to help them and then one day it breaks down the barrier and you're able to give the gospel because i'll guarantee you like we see on the on the internet where people neighbors are fighting each other over a fence or or are just doing whatever they can to irritate their other neighbor because they hate each other you're never going to talk about the gospel and well, besides that the one who's causing it is not going to be in with god because he says love your neighbor love your brother just the opposite of what the world tells you to do world tells you, chase that guy who flipped you off on the highway and chase him down and beat him up, okay? The Bible says, pray for him. Doesn't mean go follow him. <laughs> Just pray for him. Verse 21. And this commandment we have from him, this commandment we have from Christ, from God. Remember Christ says, if you love me, you'll follow my commandments. John the Revelator is repeating it. He said, in this commandment we have from him, from Christ, that he who loves God must also love his brother as well. Hmm. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to read the first, out of chapter 5, verse 1. Let me read this real quick. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and, whoever, and everyone who loves him, who begot, who begot, also loves him who is begotten of him. Let me read that again. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is the Messiah. Christ is Messiah, the anointed one. That's what it means. Christ is not his last name. He's the anointed one. Is born of God, of the Father. And everyone who loves him, God the Father, who begot, also loves him who is begotten. That's Jesus. In other words, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll love him. If you love, you got him, then you also love me at the same time. It's intertwined. Synonymous. Ladies and gentlemen, our time is, I've been saying this for, I guess, two or three years. And people say, well, you don't know when the end's coming. You're exactly right. We don't know. No one knows. And anybody who says, well, they, they go to a date setting, well, well dang it. Then that, I can't, they can't come on. If they say, well, they're going to come on the uh, 6th of July, well, then that means that day is already uh, not coming on that day. Because <laughs> remember, Christ, when he was in human form, he said, no one knows the hour of the day, Matthew 24, uh, Mark 13, and Luke 21, says, no one knows the hour of the day, not even the Son of Man, he's talking about in his human form, his, his humanity didn't, didn't know, he said, only God the Father knows, so anybody who says, well, I, I know a religion like the Jehovah's Witnesses, the uh, Seventh-day Adventist, and there's a couple others, who, who said, well, we believe that, you know, uh, Matter of fact, one of the Messianic Jewish uh, congregations uh, in Oklahoma uh, made it made it the same prediction. He said, "You're saying you know more than Jesus Christ, Yeshua." Problem. Okay, that's against God, that's against Scripture. Um, if you're lost, or if you don't know if you're if you're you don't know if you're saved, and you you got a tug in your heart, is I'm not the one with the answer. The answer is through Jesus Christ, through the Bible, through his word that he wrote, that he told these people how to write. From Genesis to Revelation, the first sentence of the Bible talks about Jesus. 
And the last sentence talks about Jesus. The first sentence not only talks about Jesus, the Son, but he also talks about the triune God. Right off the bat. First sentence. If you don't know if you're saved or not, and it's worrying you, you, you do have that fear, you do have that anxiety that he was just talking about, is realize we repent. Repentance is required as part of salvation. You say, what do you mean? If, if you're, you don't realize you have an issue or a problem or sickness of alcoholism or drug addiction, the first thing is what? Admitting that you have a problem that you can't fix. Same thing. Our cancer or our addiction is to sin, is a cancer of the soul. And repentance is to turn from, turn from our sin. He says that. It's not rocket science. You don't have to have a priest or a pastor to, to walk you through it. You can do it on your own. That priest and that pastor have to also have their own sins forgiven by God, not by a church. A church can't forgive you of sin. Men can't forgive you of sins. They can't absolve you from sins. All we can do is point you back to the scripture of the one who wrote it. He says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Jesus is God, God the Son, Son of God, same, same. That's a title, firstborn title of authority. Believe that he came in the image of simple flesh. To, to, first of all, like I say, to repent of your sin, knowing you have a sin, you can't save yourself. You can actually go say, Father, I've sinned against you. I have. I can't save myself. You don't have to do it in my words, but to act, not just to say it and say, okay, I got that checked off. No. People do that and say, okay, did you say these words? Yeah, you said the magic pill or the magic password. You're still just as lost. But to actually mean it, knowing that you need God to save you, you can't screw this up, okay, because the Holy Spirit is guiding you as an unbeliever to on the, the, the prayer of salvation. Father, I've sinned against you repentance. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, came in the image of sinful flesh to this world. He came through the Virgin Mary. We all agree on that. Lived a sinless life, tempting everything in every area. Went to a cross he didn't deserve to die for sins he never committed. Once he paid the price of sin with his own blood, which was prophesied in Genesis 3.15, and in Isaiah, and in Daniel, and in so on and so forth. He said that he shed his blood, God's blood, perfect sinless blood of an innocent lamb, the, la the Passover lamb, yes, out of Exodus, the Passover lamb, which he died for the sins of the world as the fully God and fully man. And he said, I have paid the price. It is completed. Tetelest died. Then he released his own soul, went in the grave for three days, rose three days later, and showed up to over 500 people right off the bat. And to believe, I believe that this happened. Please, Lord Jesus, save me. I believe who you are. I believe you're the Savior of the world. I believe that you died for my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. And become my Lord, my God, and forgive me. It's in your holy name, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Amen. Okay, if you've said this, if you honestly mean this and you're wanting more information, go to your pastor. Uh, you, can, you can talk to me if you wish. If not, okay. But go find somebody who knows, who's, who's got this down right, preferably someone who's got a little bit of gray hair, maybe. Um, somebody who's been in this, been, got a few scars and, and and has accepted Christ and is a true true believer. And they don't say, well, you got to become a believer. Um, another, you can become a believer if as long as you believe and you go get baptized. Baptism is a part of salvation. Jesus made that very clear in the Book of John. But baptism after salvation is commanded. After you're saved, your sins are forgiven, you're going to heaven, you identify yourself as a Christian through baptism. Get baptized. And then start reading God's Word. I would suggest my, my, the best book you can read is the book of John, which is the fourth of the gospel. Same writer that we're talking about now, only years earlier. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. You have the three, the three, the three epistles. You have the uh, Synoptic Gospels, or the first three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and then you have John, the, the, the Epistle of John, okay? And it's one, two, and three are also his epistles. Read the book of John, explains who Jesus, sorry about that, explains who Jesus is and how you get saved, okay? Until then, 
This is Scott with Pray5. You can come to pray5.org and look at everything's free there. Or you can go to or you can contact us at pray5.org, pray5.org at gmail.com, pray5.org at gmail.com. And send us a uh, question or concerns or materials. If you don't have a Bible and you would like one for free, we'll send one to you at no cost. As long as supplies last, as long as God provides, which he's going to, the Bible's free. Just read it. That's all we ask is that you read it. Okay? Let's go ahead and pray out, shall we? Father, thank you for this time together. We ask for your blessings, your mercy, and your grace. Protect us from evil, physical danger, sickness. And write your word upon our hearts and give us truth through your Holy Spirit. We ask for the blessings and protection of Israel. We ask for a great awakening to sweep this nation, starting in our churches. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Messiah, Yeshua. Amen. See you tomorrow on uh, Shorts of Scott number 34. Send your questions in and I'll get them on there. I have, I have, a, I have some, one or two slots. If, if We should have at least one slot open. So if you have a question, I can squeeze it into one of the slots, okay? And that's, uh, you can just do it here on Facebook, on the Facebook Messenger. Just text it to me. Love you. Go read your Bible and realize if you're worshiping a different Jesus than God Almighty, and that's not the one in the Bible and you do not have salvation. Because you're putting your trust in someone else with the same name. See you tomorrow.